Hi, welcome everybody and happy new year. 2021 is finally here. So let's hope it's going to be a good year of positive progress. Uh, we are going to, uh, as always, start seated in our chair. And please remember that your chair should be on a secure surface. So if you're on a floor, that's probably going to be a little slippy. You might want a yoga mat or something underneath. If you're on a carpet, you should be fine. And I like to put a couple yoga blocks or you could put books on your chair just to get the hips a little higher than the knees because that makes it so much easier for us to sit up nice and straight and tall. Although straight really isn't, our spine isn't straight, it has a lot of curves, but it allows the curves to line up just right when you're a little bit higher on your chair. I'll show you from the side. I'm not gonna sit this way, but as my knees are just a little lower, it's just much easier for me to get my head and shoulders right above my hips. So if you haven't, um, if you haven't tried this before, I recommend, you know, maybe treat yourself to a couple yoga blocks from Amazon or find a couple books in your house. And if you don't do it this time, maybe play around with it after class and see how that works for you. Otherwise, go ahead and sit right up at the edge of your chair. That helps as well. When you're sitting back, you tend to slump. And really, one of the things that we need as we get older and people of all ages Aligned posture helps the body move, breathe, and function much better. When we're in a slump, there's a reason for that word, we get in a slump with our breathing, sometimes even our energy level, and our digestion because we're squishing all those organs of digestion. All right, so that's my little lecture for this morning. Go ahead and sit right up on your blocks on the edge of your seat. And then let your toes face pretty much forward. I'm gonna take another block and put it in between my thighs. That helps me get my knees in line with my hips. When my knees are in line with my hips, that helps me to stay upright and supported. When I'm out here, I tend to slump. When I knock my knees in, I also tend to slump. So we always wanna create that good aligned foundation with the feet solidly on the floor, the seat, on the blocks or on the chair. And you wanna make sure you're on your sitting bones, not your tailbone. Your tailbone tends to tuck you under like a sad dog. So rock forward and find those bones, one underneath each butt. Good, and now that we're all in our places with bright, shiny faces, let's take a couple cleansing breaths. We'll just inhale through the nose and exhale out the mouth with a big sigh. <sighs> And again, easy breath in through the nose. And exhale. One more time, easy breath in. And exhale with a sound. Good. Take a moment to close your eyes or soften your gaze. Press into your feet just a little bit. And then reach the crown of your head, the tippy top of the head toward the ceiling. In this position, we'll roll the shoulders a couple times, just softly up, back, and down. Up, back, and down. And one more time, up, back, and down. And then just shake out your hands. Let your arms be nice and soft. And replace your hands on your thighs just very softly, letting the shoulders and the area across the chest where the collarbones are relax. And then with eyes closed again or soft gaze, this time take a few gentle breaths in through your nose and out through your nose. And as you take those breaths, notice the sensations in your body. Do those vests feel ragged or hard to take? Are they smooth and easy? 
no judgment right now, just noticing what's here and now as we begin our practice. And then after your next exhale, we'll blink open the eyes and we'll begin a little self-massage to prepare for our practice. We're going to bring the hands up into the scalp and massage your head, just like you're getting a good shampoo. Around the back, over the tops of the ears, right up to the top of the head. You could even take and hold your hair close to the roots and pull it a little bit. That gives you a little massage as well. It's not that pulling that your, uh, your big brother did to you when you were a little. It's just a nice gentle pull. This massage wakes up the body and increases our, uh, not only our circulation, but our sense of where our body is in space. Let's pause for a moment now, rest with the hands on the thighs. And just take a couple easy breaths in and out, noticing what you notice. Perhaps sensing a little more into the scalp than you did before. We're gonna wake up our ears now too. So we're gonna pull on the lobes a bit and then massage around the whole outside of the ear. And then into all the little nooks and crannies inside. Pull on the lobes a little bit again. And then take your fingers behind your ears, pull your elbows forward, press your head back. Just fold your ears in for a moment. Take a breath or two. And then release your hands and shake them out. A little moment to pause in awareness. And then we're going to stick the hands up under the chin. So the thumbs are here and you're massage along your gums. So you're doing it from the outside, but along the line of the gums. And that also gets you to massage with your um, thumb along the low jawline. So go out to the hinge of the jaw, make a few chewing motions. And then we're going to take a nice big yawn. Inhale your breath. Keep massaging and exhale with a ah. And then do one more like that. Keep that massage going. Inhale. And exhale. Ah. And then we'll massage along the upper lip. So you can keep the thumbs where they are and massage along this upper lip. Along the gum line of the upper jaw. And then out to the hinge again. We're going to go side to side this time. Arr, 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 arr. And again, arr, arr, arr. big wide yawn. And then release your hands and shake them out for a moment. This is kind of a workout for your hands as well, you'll notice. So kind of spread your fingers wide and then close them up. Spread them wide, close them up. Do one more like that. Spread your fingers wide, close them up, and then just shake your hands out nice and loose. We'll continue along and do the rest of the face now. So massage by the sides of your nose. I'll take my glasses off. Sides of your nose, and then along your cheekbones and your low eye socket. Be gentle. And then up into your upper eye socket. So that's where you kind of grab your brow, pinch along the brow line a couple times, working from the inside to the outside. And then take your fingers above the brow and press up towards your hairline. We always want to massage up because gravity doesn't need any help bringing things down. And then shake out your hands again. Circle your wrists. You can do that with your hands spread or soft. And then we're going to do the uh, our yoga face lift. So you put your hands on the sides of your face. 
And we're going to take a big exhale with a lion's breath. So stick our tongue out. As you do that, be careful that you're not going ah, like you're spitting out a hairball. You want to press your head back like a majestic lion. So we'll inhale the breath and exhale. Ah. Two more times like that. Inhale. And then one more time, inhale, and, and then shake out your hands again, give them a little sparkle fingers, and then close the eyes, sitting tall, just pause for a moment, and sense into your face, your head, your ears. And gently blink open your eyes. If you have a block in, you might want to take it out for a sec, hold it in your hand and shake your legs. Even if you don't have a block in, shake your legs. Good, and then we'll put the feet back on the floor. Find your nice aligned posture again, sensing into that foundation, the way you relate to the earth and the chair. And roll the shoulders up, back and down. Here we want to make sure that we have our ribs just gently aligned over our hips. There's a tendency when we think about sitting up straight to, uh, to really puff our chest and bring our ribs up and out. Well, you'll notice if you do that for a sec, you know that, okay, so if, when somebody says sit up straight and you puff out your chest like that, try to take a deep breath now. See how hard that is? That tells you you're not really in alignment. So if you let your... Uh, ribs just rest gently over your hips. Now try again. Nice, easy breath in. And hopefully you'll find that sweet spot where it's just a little bit easier. But we're going to do a little more work for our hands and arms today. So we often think that our arms are just sort of plugged into our chest, but really the muscles of the arm come up into the chest and so everything's connected and everything affects everything else. So we're going to do a little massage that goes all the way up the arm. Let's shake out the hand again. And you're going to take and pinch your pinky finger on the nail, hold it and squeeze it, release it, and then roll that finger a little bit. And then do the next one. And the nice thing about massaging with your hand versus, you know, sometimes you've seen a tennis ball or a, a roller or something, but your hand is really a nice um, massage tool because one, it adds warmth, and two, you can use your hand to sort of modulate the, the amount of pressure. So only do what's right for you. Go all the way down to the thumb. I know as we get older, our thumbs need a little more love. I know mine does. And then turn your hand over and you'll massage the palm. Now, take your arm out to the side. Make sure it's not back behind you, but just a little out in front. Spread your fingers wide and then bring it across. And we're going to keep the fingers spread wide and massage all the way up the arm. Just kind of turn it back and forth. But if you keep the fingers spread wide, the muscles of the arm will turn on as you massage them. Good. And now let's turn that palm up, use it as a little cup to help you bring your arm up so you can massage your shoulder a bit. This is that place where you're getting tense that always gets tight. And now we'll take this hand out to the side again, a little bit in front, spread your fingers and turn your thumb up and then use your hand to massage into your upper chest. Let's take a nice, easy breath in. Make a fist with your hand. You might feel muscles turn on in here. And then take a ha exhale. Spread your fingers. And now let's shake that arm out. And shake this one out too. It's been doing a lot of work. And then just pause for a moment 
and notice how you feel on each side. Perhaps you can feel a little difference, maybe a little more softness and relaxation in the side that you just massaged. All right, so that second side is starting to feel a little left out. Let's go ahead and massage that. So just give your arm a shake to begin with. And then pinch the pinky finger and roll it. And move along to each, give it a little kind of hard push. And then roll it. We always forget about these little places in our body, our hands and feet get especially neglected as we exercise our big muscles, but we forget that everything's attached and these little places need to be worked out and also relaxed a little bit. All right, so into that thumb, particularly the thumb of your dominant hand you might find or at the base of the thumb likes a little extra massage. and then turn the palm up and massage into the palm. This is a good thing to do once or twice a day. If you're just sitting around or chatting with a friend on the phone, you know, if you've got it on the speaker phone, it's kind of nice to do some of these things as you're chatting. All right, so spread your fingers wide and we're going to bring the arm across and just kind of roll the arm back and forth as we massage up. Now use your hand as a cup, turn the palm up and hold that elbow and come up to get into this upper shoulder area that gets tight. And then let's release the hand down, shake things out a bit and turn the palm forward. You'll notice that turning the palm forward opens your chest up here. You can experiment with that by putting your hand here, kind of across your chest and into their upper shoulder area, and just turn the hand. You can feel the arm bone sort of rolling in. And then turn it open, and you can see how that opens that area up. So massage with the area open, and the fingers spread. There's a big difference between just a limp hand like this and this arm open and active. All right, so let's take an easy breath in through your nose. Make a fist and hold tight, keep massaging, and now exhale with that ha ah sound. And then shake everything out. And here, circle your wrists with your hands just floppy a couple times. Shake them out again like, like a couple wet fish. And then replace them on your thighs. And sense into your chest, your shoulders, even your back. And we're going to shake out the legs again. Just give ourselves a little shaking our sillies out. And then sometimes it's nice if you'd like to put one foot in front of the other. That can be kind of comfortable because that's the way we're usually moving one foot in front of the other. So that's fine to do as well. And then let's massage the rib cage area. So we're going to do our breathing practice now. Massaging on the sides of the ribs. And if one hand feels better, just do one and then the other. And if it's available to you, you can take your hands behind your back and massage your low back. And then take them this way and massage the ribs on the back. Kind of forget that you've got ribs back there. But when we breathe, we want this whole ribcage structure to open on the inhale and close on the exhale. So it's kind of nice to make ourselves aware of what's going on back there. Then shake things out. So we're going to take one hand now and place it on the rib cage. If you can put your thumb behind, you can do that, or just hold the whole hand on the front. Sometimes thumbs don't like that. All right, and then activate spread through your fingers, thumb forward, and push into your feet so you're nice and tall. 
We'll take an easy breath in through the nose. Feel this rib cage expand. Make a fist with your hand, just gently. And then we're going to exhale like a snake. Spread your fingers and make a hissing sound. A little smile for that snake. Good. And maybe you notice that as you exhale, your rib cage pulled in along with your waist. So we're training our breathing muscles and our core muscles at the same time. Let's do the other side. So the hands on the rib cage, reach down through the opposite fingers and push down into your feet to sit tall. Take an inhale breath and make a gentle fist like you're pulling up on a rope from the floor. Squeeze your legs a little and then spread your fingers and smile. Feel that waist pull in and hold it for just a moment. Feel that pulling in, but then in order to breathe again, you have to let that tension go. So we're training these muscles to have good resting tone. It doesn't mean that we want to be holding our bellies in all the time because you'll notice if you do that, you can't breathe. Let's do one more on each side. Hands on the rib cage, spread through the fingers, take an inhale breath. Make fists hold tight and exhale. Switch hands. We want to try to focus on Noticing the sensation of the rib cage opening on the inhale, closing on the exhale. Spread your fingers wide, push into your feet, inhale. Make fist, hold tight, and exhale. Spread the fingers. Just relax for a moment, hands resting softly on the thighs. And then we'll do a couple more exercises that help train our body in balanced alignment. So when we use our arms in different positions, we engage different muscles of the chest and back because our hands and arms are all attached up there. We're going to pretend like we're holding a big beach ball. You want some space in your armpits. It's not a tiny beach ball. It's big. Push into your feet. Take your inhale breath. Make fists and hold tight. And then spread your fingers draw in the waist good bring the arms down give them a little swing and we'll hold that beach ball again catch it take your inhale breath make your fists and hold tight then spread your fingers and let's swing those arms out and let's roll the shoulders a couple times. Switch which foot's in front if you like, and then spread your fingers wide. Make sure your arms are a little bit in front of you so that you're not sticking your head forward. A little in front of the hips. Really spread the fingers wide. Arms are active. Inhale your breath. Make fists and hold tight. You can tighten up your bum as well here. And spread your fingers to exhale. Take your hands out for a sec. We'll do one more like that. Remember, when we breathe, the pattern is always that our, our fingers are open when we inhale. We retain the breath with a gentle fist. And then we exhale with the fingers spread. One more time. So we have the hands down. Push them a little forward. You might feel the muscles in your back engage. Take an inhale breath. Make your fist hold tight and squeeze your block if you have it. Exhale. But on that exhale, push into your feet and stay nice and tall. You want to keep all this space here. Don't let that exhale pull you down and in. Good. Let's shake things out again. Roll your shoulders. The relaxing is just as important as the working. And then if you have a block, we're going to place it on the floor using our hip hinge. And then shake out your legs once again and stomp your feet. You can rearrange a little, find your seat again. And we're gonna work the feet a little bit here. First, we're gonna slap the legs all over. So just lift your leg and bring a little blood flow by just slapping and awareness. This will wake up your leg. If you want, you can slap your foot a little bit today. 
Put that foot back on the floor. Good. Now, keeping this leg as an anchor, we'll take the foot we just slapped out and then hold onto your chair either on the bottom or on the back, but make sure that doesn't make your ribs pop ahead of your hips. Keep them just aligned over and then spread your toes wide and circle your ankle. Every day you should do some work to circle your ankles and spread and scrunch your toes. And then point your toe and flex. Keep a little soft bend in the knee when you flex the foot. Point and flex, point and flex. All right, let's hold the point. I don't know if you can see my foot. I'm gonna hold it up, but you keep it down. But see my toes? We're gonna to spread them now. So I got the heel on the floor. Reach down through your fingers, turn the palms forward, inhale. Make fists now and exhale, spread your fingers. Bring that leg in, slap it up a little more, and place it down on the floor. Right, let's do the other side. So this leg is your anchor. You can push into that a little bit as you lift this leg up. Give it some flaps. Right, and then we're going to stretch that foot out. Stretch the leg out long, hold onto your chair, Don't pop your ribs. Circle your ankle, spread the toes wide, circle it the other way, and then we'll point and flex, point, flex, couple more, point, flex, point, flex, and on your next point, you'll hold that point. I'm lifting my leg up so you can see it. Spread your toes, heels down. Spread your fingers and push forward a little bit. Inhale your breath. Make your fists and hold tight. And then spread your fingers. Bring that leg in. Slap it up a little bit again. And place your feet on the floor. Once again, just take a moment before we move to standing to Sense your feet on the floor, your knees in line with your hips, your seat is on the chair, on your sitting bones, you can wiggle a bit. And then roll those shoulders up, back and down. So the ribs and the shoulders just rest gently over the hips. And the crown of the head, the tippy top, reaches toward the ceiling so that you're long through the back of your neck. Couple easy breaths in and out. And then blinking open your eyes. We're going to use our hip hinge to stand up. So I'm going to move my chair just so you can see. But you stay right where you are. chair to the side here. And then we will sit up nice and tall again on the edge of those blocks. See the knees below the hips and the shoulders above the ribs and hips. All right, take your hands and turn the palms up so their pinkies are resting in the crease of your hips. And then bring your feet back a little bit. I'm going to sit up nice and tall and then keeping the head in line with the spine and the, and the sacrum. We're going to lean forward, push into your feet a little bit, and then come back up. You can put one hand behind your head with the elbow forward a little bit and push back in it as you lean forward and push into your feet to come back up. Let's do two more like that. Hinging forward and hinging back up. This keeps our spine nice and elongated. And last one, hinge forward and back up. But let's release the hands, spread the fingers wide, bring them overhead to a nice wide V. It's nice to show you this from the side because notice how my hands are a little in front of my face. When I bring them back here, see how it tends to pop my ribs and head forward? Be 
you want to bring them just a little in front of the face to a big wide knee, turn your palms out and push down like you're pushing through water. If this is not comfortable for your shoulders, only bring it as far as feels comfortable to you. Let's do one more if you can with the arms overhead and push back down. But we're going to put our hands on our thighs now and use that hip hinge to come up. You want to make sure you feel the weight in your feet before you start to push into the feet. And keep your hip knees hip distance apart. So let's hinge forward, feel the weight in your feet, push down, straighten your legs, bring your hips underneath you, and come to standing. Once you get to standing, just shake everything out. I have a little puppy. She's like she's a dog now. She's about a year old. But every time she gets up from a nap, the first thing she does is she shakes all over. There must be something to that. So shake that out and march your feet a little bit. We've been sitting for a long time. We want to get our body moving. And I'm going to turn my chair around. And you can hold on to your chair and just march with your knees up. As you do this, you want to have your eyes forward and your chest nice and open. Particularly if you live in a flat environment, it's good to make sure you can get your legs up so when you come to a curve, you have the strength and the muscle memory to get your foot up and step over it. All right, let's pause there. And we'll come, um, you can stand behind or in front. I'm going to stand in front of my chair because we're going to shake things out a little more. Okay? Shake out your hands. Shake out your legs. And then stand with the weight in your toes and just bubble your heels like you're running away. All right. And then move your feet a little wider. We'll put hands on the hips. And just swivel the hips a little in one direction and then swivel them in the other direction. And then take your hands nice and loose. You're gonna put them behind your back if you can, but if that's not comfortable, just let them sit stay at your sides. <coughs> Pardon me. And then we're gonna turn from the hips. So put a little soft bend in your knees. And go side to side. Now you can let your hands drop, but don't let your hands fling. They're just going to follow along. So my arms are moving, but I'm not using my arms to move. Let's see what I mean. Just let them go slowly and loosely. Good. And then we'll come back to stand with the feet side by side and all 10 toes facing forward mostly. Some of us have a little turnout, but mostly forward, and then we're going to do some of our um, arm exercise again. So spread your fingers wide, push down into your feet. We'll take an inhale breath, make a fist and hold tight. See if you can feel, hold, take that fist, and then spread your fingers. Standing nice and tall, we'll spread the fingers wide, reach the arms to that wide V. See how it's a V? I'm not up here. That hunches my shoulders. I'm going to bring it right here and push the hands down. I'm going to step back a little bit so you can see better. Inhale the arms up and turn the palms down. Press them down. One more time. Inhale up and spread the fingers wide and push. And then push them back down again. Roll the shoulders. Shake out the hands. And now let's reach down with one hand and take the other one to that kind of holding a beach ball shape with the thumb in. Let's uh, inhale the breath and then make fists with both hands. Tighten up your bum too and we'll lean toward the downward hand. Not too much. Exhale as you spread your fingers. Like use an inhale through your nose to come back up and bring the arm down. So you can do it that way again, or you can reach down to the fingers here and all the way up. That arm is kind of in front again, just a little bit. And we'll inhale the breath. Make fists with both hands and tighten your bum too. Squeeze your legs a little bit together. Lean a bit to the side and stay there as you do that hissing sound. 
and then use your inhale through your nose to come up, bend the elbow to bring it down. We'll do the same thing on the other side. So reach down with the opposite hand and then sort of cactus arm this one. Thumbs back, pinkies forward. Inhale your breath. Make fists hold tight, tighten your bum. Squeeze your legs together and lean just a little to the side, not much. You wanna lean away from the bent hand. And exhale. Right, and then use your inhale breath to come back up. Bring the arm down. And if you like, if it works for your shoulder, go ahead and bring that arm all the way up. Inhale your breath. Make your fists and hold tight. Lean away from the extended arm. So down toward the, look, the other arm. And exhale. Use an inhale breath to come up, then the elbow to come down and shake things out. Right, march those feet a little bit. And bounce your knees just a little bit. So put your weight in your heels, soften your knees, and just a very gentle bounce. Sometimes we tend to lock up our knees when we're doing some things. And this little gentle bounce helps get us out of that pattern. We're going to move back to the side of the chair now. Do a little work for our feet. All right, so take your inside foot closest to the chair, put it just a bit forward of the other. So the toes of the back foot are at about the arch of the front foot, and your feet are close together for this. We're going to bring the arm up like we're holding half that beach ball again. We'll go up on the toes and down. Up. And down. Now the tendency here, because I saw it in myself, when you go up, your legs kind of want to go out like that. So see if you can go just straight up by pushing a little more into the inner edge of your foot, push into the big toe ball. This helps strengthen our ankles and our feet. Good. And now if you'd like, you can reach your arm up as you inhale and down as you exhale. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up, and exhale down. Let's do the last one, we'll inhale up. And while you're there, push into your feet, make a fist, hold tight, and stay there when you do that hissing sound, exhale. And then bring your arm down, and march your feet just a little bit. We'll do a little balance here now. So you're going to stand on the inner edge foot and then turn your toes so that you're, you can put your foot sort of on top of the other foot or you can balance it against the, uh, the ankle there. This knee's turned out, but not all the way. And you want to kind of diagonally forward. Push down into your standing foot and we'll make that cactus work um, like holding half of each ball arm. Take an inhale breath here and exhale with a Turn your foot and march it out. And then we'll uh, stand on this foot, the inside foot, and slide the outside foot back. So you're on the ball of your foot, both feet are facing forward and do a little bounce here, relax your knees. From here we'll take this arm up and out to the side, tighten up your bum, take an inhale breath, make a fist and hold tight, exhale like a snake, spread your fingers, and then bring that arm down and step forward. Let's spread the fingers wide, bring the arms overhead and exhale, press them down. But standing tall, we'll march over to the other side. That wasn't really a march, that was a little bit of a saunter. Okay, so inside foot is forward, outside foot's a little back. Stabilize the shoulders and chest by making this uh, holding half of each ball. All right, and then push into the inner edges as your feet as you go up and down, up 
and down, up and down. So you can go up without going too far forward. And then if you'd like, you can start as you bring the arm up and down. And down, and on this last one, we're gonna hold it up. With your inhale breath, make a fist, pretend like you're pulling a rope, push into the big toe side of your foot, and exhale. And then bring your heels down, your arm down, and just march those feet a little bit. All right, we're gonna stand on that inside foot now, and turn. So you can balance your heel against your ankle. And then make sure you're not slumping here. You wanna get that hip underneath you. Really push down into your foundation. Use your chair for balance and bring the arm up. Take an inhale breath. Make a fist, hold tight. And exhale. Good. Bring the arm down, take a break. Just march it out for a moment. And then we'll go back on that same side foot, turn your toes, we'll reach this arm up this time if that works for your shoulder. Inhale, make a fist, hold tight, and exhale with a Bring the arm down, and we'll march those feet again. Now, standing on the inner foot, we're going to slide the outer foot back. Notice how I have both toe, sets of toes facing forward. I don't want to go out or in. <coughs> Pardon me. But that balance on the ball of your back foot and give a little bounce. All right, from here, we'll pause that bounce. That leg that's extended back, really tighten up the bum on that side. And we'll inhale up and down. And up and down. And then the next time you're up, let's pause, inhale, make a fist hold tight and tighten the bum a little more. Exhale. And then we'll step it forward. Bring both arms overhead and both arms back down. Remember to really spread your fingers to energize your arms. Push up and push down. Last one, feel like you're pushing through water and then turn the palms down as you push down. And then roll the shoulders, shake out your knees and stand tall for a moment. You can put a hand on the chair if that helps, but let the weight be not way back in your heels, but a little more into the front part of your heel. Bounce your knees just a bit. And stand tall, sensing the heels, hips, ribs, shoulders, and ears all in alignment, allowing you to take an easy breath in and an easy breath out. And just shake everything out again. And we'll sit in our chair for our final piece of relaxation. You can have your blocks if you'd like. And get yourself back into that position of alignment and when you're seated, that you feel your feet underneath you, your seat on the chair, ribs, shoulders, and ears all in alignment. Shake out those hands, spread your fingers wide, and then just let them flop. Take the hands and rest them on the thighs, and the crown of the head toward the sky. Return to sensing your breath. Without forcing or doing any exercise with your breath, just notice the expansion of your ribs on the inhale. And the 
gentle drawing in on the exhale. Allowing the gentle rhythm of the breath and the soft beating of the heart to soothe the body and calm the mind. I invite you all to continue with this for a few moments more after class. Just taking those few moments to yourself to just breathe and eat before you get back into your busy day. I bring my hands to my heart in prayer position and bowing my head and say to you, namaste, which means the light in my heart sees and honors the light in yours. Namaste.